Hey everyone, this is Jimmy coming to you today with a beginner's guide for Super Mario Odyssey nibble percent. With speedrunning becoming more and more popular, I'm sure there are loads of people who just like me are just starting out and want to try their hands on the newest installment of the Mario franchise. The most popular category for this game would be the any percent category. Even though there is an excellent guide made by popular streamer Smallland1, the run is pretty long and can therefore be quite daunting, especially for people who have no experience speedrunning before. Unfortunately though, when I started out I couldn't find any guides for this category. And while the route is relatively easy to pick up by just looking at some runs here on YouTube, there were a few things I had to find out the hard way and wish I could have learned about before starting. For this reason I decided to put a guide together for those who just like me are new to speedrunning Super Mario Odyssey and want to try out a shorter category before jumping into something like any percent. A small disclaimer though, as I said, I'm only a beginner speedrunning myself and this guide is only to help those just starting out on their way. Nonetheless, at the time of recording this, it is still very possible to get close to the top 100 with the route explained in this video. I got a 926, which at the time was number 106 on the leaderboards. If you'd like to see how that went, make sure to watch that video after this one. Without further ado, let's get on with the guide. The goal of Nipper Percent is to collect a thousand coins and buy Mario's boxer's outfit as fast as possible. This reveals Mario's upper body, hence the name Nipple Percent. Before starting out running, I highly recommend getting familiar with the game's movement mechanics a bit first. For this, I personally like Small End 1's guide the most, which I'll link to in the description. All I'll explain here is that in Super Mario Odyssey, rolling is the main means of movement and is done the fastest by shaking the controller. Also, there's something called a homing cappy throw, where you shake the controller after throwing cappy. This is often a quick and easy way to capture certain objects or enemy characters without the need for being super precise with your throws. You'll notice that the game's language is set to Japanese. This is because it's faster than having the game in English. You can set the game's language over at the settings of your Switch. Now let's start looking at the route. First we start out by pressing the start button. The moment you press start is also the moment you want to start your timer if you want to time your runs. After pressing start, you get the first cutscene of the run. There are about 10 of these in the entire run, which are skippable by pressing the plus button on your controller. Time continues to tick when a cutscene is running, so don't underestimate the importance of skipping on time. After the cutscene, there's an unskippable tutorial part where you are asked to move around the camera and press jump. The time this part takes is fixed, so no need to abuse your controller here. As soon as the game allows it, start rolling towards the bridge, jump on and cross it. After the cutscene, roll northwest towards the boxes in the wall. Break the box next to the top left one. This one breaks in one hit. Grab the 45 coins behind them and get out. Roll over the ledge, jump on, capture the lever, and proceed towards the door. In the next room, I like to start with the ground pound before rolling. Doing so will make your initial roll speed faster and lets you cross the water by skipping over it for the most part. Capture the frog and jump up the ledge. You can jump by pressing A or jump higher by shaking the controller. Proceed by jumping up, this time grabbing the coin rings. Make your way over to the other side of the water and up the top, here also grabbing the coin rings on your way. Go through the door here and once on the other side go right. I like the long jump here because it's faster than walking and safer than rolling. Grabbing this one coin here on the slope spawns the rest of the coins. Play around with the camera angle when you roll and you'll get it eventually. Jump on the platform to start the boss fight with Topper. This boss fight is pretty straightforward. The timing of jumping on Topper's head is something you'll figure out with time. But I kinda aim for the moment just before he starts rotating. Try to grab some coins during the fight as well. You kinda wanna have 92 coins after the fight, but don't stress if you're one or two short. Capture the wire, and next up is Cascade Kingdom. In Cascade, you go straight, capture the chump, and shoot him towards the rock to reveal the first moon. Grab it, and after the cutscene, make your way over to the other side of the bridge. A non-skippable cutscene will appear. Apparently the quickest way to trigger this cutscene is at the rocks on the left. Yeah. 
After the cutscene, jump to the ledge on the right. Stand right about here and perform a dive, followed by a triple jump, cap dive, wall jump and another dive to reach the other side. The dive at the start is to get Mario up to speed before doing the triple jump. This setup is not the fastest I'm sure, but it's easy to get consistent while still not being super slow. Now roll over to the rocks past the jump. Try to take a line that enables you to grab most of the coins. Ground pound here to get the first Luigi hint art of the run. Roll back to capture the chump and grab as much of the remaining coins on your way. Hit the wall with the chump to open up the 2D part. Go through the pipe to enter the 2D section. As straightforward as this part looks, it's easy to lose time here so try to make sure you jump through the hole after breaking the block and not break another one. Next up is the last boss fight of the run, Madam Brood. I personally find this the hardest part of the run. Start out by doing a long jump followed by two cap throws to capture the chomp. If you do this quick enough, you'll have enough room to trigger the shooting stage. After shooting the chomp and hitting her, she'll throw the chomp towards you. The fastest way to recapture it is to throw out Cappy, backflip on the chomp, release Cappy to hit off the pink hat and quickly throw Cappy again to recapture it. This is pretty difficult to get consistent, but even though you might not be able to do this almost instant capture, Backflipping on the chomp will prevent Madame Brood to pull the chomp back towards her, giving you the opportunity to recapture it by doing two quick throws. The slowest way to do this, it seems, is to let Madame Brood throw the chomp and wait for her to pull it back in. You'll move closer to her and grab the chomp there. I did this first, but switched the previous explained method after a few days. A note on coins here. Before leaving for the next kingdom, you basically want to have 320 coins. After every time you hit Madame Brood, she'll drop a bunch, so jump in to grab as much as possible. Again, being a few short is not that big of a deal, but more about that later. After hitting Madame Brood a total of 3 times with the chomp, grab the power moon. This will bring you back to the Odyssey. You'll still need one more moon before being able to move to the next and final kingdom of the run. After the cutscene, turn around to where the chomp is. You'll be jumping to the top of the ledge to grab the moon there. This part you might need to practice a few times as well, but cap diving after triple jumping will get you there. If you miss it, you can stand with your back face to the rock, do a backflip and a wall jump after. Head back to the Odyssey and go to Sand Kingdom. Alright, the hard part of the run is over. All that's left now is mostly shaking the controller a bunch. During the conversation with Cappy, you want to spam B in order to skip the tutorial. After skipping the cutscenes, roll down the hill, making sure you hit the checkpoint. Now get up the roof of this building by climbing the pole. You can also do a homing Cappy throw to capture the wire on top of the pole. In the corner over here, do a ground pound to get the second Luigi hint dart. Capture the wire and move through the wire to the other side of the square. Now in the distance, in the desert, you'll see a square shaped shadow. Go there next. Once you've made it to the shadow, ground pound in the middle of it to get the final hint dart. Now turn around and roll northwest over the hill. Over there you'll see a wall and the edge of the map. You'll be jumping around the corner here to the Sphinx. It looks hard at first, but it's way less precise than the jump earlier in Cascade. I like the long jump out of rolling and get around like this. You can also take your time to set up for it if you're not yet that comfortable with the movement mechanics of the game. Once you've made it across, talk to the Sphinx. You want to have 720 coins or more here. There are no real backup strats left at this point of the run that I know of. Meaning that if you don't have 720 coins at this point, you basically have to restart the run. Go into the hole in the wall and collect the remaining 280 coins. Press the minus button the moment you hit 1000 coins and warp to the checkpoint you hit earlier. And finally, to conclude the run, enter the shop on Mario's right Talk to the left NPC behind the counter. Move one item to the left and buy the boxers. In case you are timing your run, the moment you press buy is when you want to stop your timer. And that's it, nipple percent. 
We will now go over some coins not part of the route, but possible to get when needed without much time loss. First, in Cascade Kingdom, in the bush closest to the chomp, there's a stack of 10 coins. In the bush behind this one, there's a bush with one extra coin. There's also an extra coin in the bush on the right side of the Odyssey. In Sand, the bush on the left when you roll down to the checkpoint has one extra coin. As well as the pot here next to the hint art on the roof. On your way to the final hint art, there's a coin in the cactus. After getting the last hint art, rolling through this bush here provides one coin. On your way to the edge of the level, on the left side, there's a specific group of bushes that give two coins, as well as four cactuses, which all give one coin. Obviously, some of these coins cost more time to grab than others, so try to plan ahead depending on how many coins you are short of 320 after the Madam Brute fight. Alright, that's it, the end of the guide. Thanks for watching and have fun speedrunning. I hope to catch you on Twitch sometime. The link to my Twitch and all other resources mentioned in this video are in the description.